Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Waharachak Wadash. Double honors as always to our beloved elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear forbear, and the sincere citations as always to the rest of the hopeful elected nation of Israel which consists of our sincere elders and Akim of Great Millstone and the Akim on down that teach the likewise doctrine and truth and sincerity. The speckled bird Hebrew is like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. The sincere Akim that rehearsed the righteous acts of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and truth and sincerity. And the sincere Akwakim that listen in silence and meekness as the scriptures command to do so. And this is going to be another Shabbat day reading and I wanted to get into the I'm going to entitle this through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, the law of the priests. Okay, so I'm going to get into the duties of the priests of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. And the topic, it may seem a little, um, it's going to touch on a few different points and get into how the Heavenly Father Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, he never only intended for priests to be within the, uh, the, Le the Levitical order. All right, so. Without any further ado, let me go ahead and get the first um, the first steps out the way, like I typically do for the Shabbat readings. And this is the daytime portion of the Shabbat. The Shabbat came in last night. All right, we still, um, you know, the Feast of Tabernacles it started uh, last week. Um, <clears throat> so like it started last week, Monday evening, once um, at evening, so like it, once the moon came out around that time. All right, so right now. We're in another Shabbat, and this would be the, if I remember correctly, I think it's the eighth day that's uh, spoken about when the Feast of Tabernacles has the first day is supposed to be um, a Shabbat, and the eighth day is supposed to be a Shabbat. So this should be that eighth day right now. If I'm uh, mistaken, I can correct me if I'm wrong in the comment board, but without any further ado, right here we have the Heavenly Father's only, it's like it, the Heavenly Father's true holy powerful and mighty name which is yahweh all right the hebrew language which he gave us that's also the language we use to call upon his true holy and powerful and mighty name so hebrew is read from right to left we have the yah the ha the wa and the ha so it's yahweh which means he is the ancient of days he has no beginning he has no end one of his ancient titles was alashadia which is where you get the uh, english term god almighty in hebrew terrible demon like power he's the god that once flooded the earth and he's the same god that's going to bring icbm nuclear missile destruction to babylon the great and this is his only begotten son's name that sits that sits at his right hand side okay so his name is yahweh shai which means he saves he delivers this is the only begotten son of the heavenly father and the only spirit that the heavenly father himself personally created all other spirits were created through his only begotten son all right. These are the true, holy and powerful and mighty names that you call upon to be saved in times of trouble. And these are the true, holy and powerful, mighty names that you call upon. And these are the uh, these are the true, holy and powerful, mighty names that you use to pray to the heavenly father, who is our only God, the only God of the Hebrew Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans and speckled bird. All right. And this is how if you want to build a relationship with the heavenly father, for those that have been in the world wondering how this is how you do it. Calling on his true, holy and powerful and mighty name. As well as the name of his only begotten son, because no man goeth unto the father, but through his only begotten son. All right. So I'm going to start off with the first scripture that I normally get for the Shabbat reading, which is the book of Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, starting at verse... I'm going to start at verse um, 13. And it reads, Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Shabbat day, and sat down. <clears throat> so like, yeah. Verse 15. And after the reading of the law, and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue, sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Verse 16. 
Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear the most high power, Yahweh, give audience. Verse 17. The most high power, Yahweh, of this people of Israel chose our fathers. Those fathers were Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. And exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, Matazariah. And with an high arm brought he them out of it. It's lucky he had to let a truck pass. All right. Reading on Acts chapter 13, verse 18. And about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided them to them. It's like he divided their land to them by lot. OK, so this means that the land, the chosen land mass was divided amongst the 12 tribes of Israel, his chosen people. Keeping that in mind also. Verse 20. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward, they desired a king. And the Most High Power, Yahweh, gave unto them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath the Most High Power Yahweh, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Yahweh Shai. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth the Most High Power Yahweh, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Shabbat day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Right, because as you can see right here in this chapter, it was a custom among our people on the Shabbat day to go into the synagogues and read out of the law and out of the prophets. But despite the fact that that was a custom, you know, those of our people of the two thirds, they didn't receive the truth of the gospel. They didn't understand that the laws and the prophets all pointed towards Lord Yahweh Shai, whom the world only calls Jesus Christ. OK, his true name is Yahweh Shai. And despite knowing these things, they still, as it's about to say right here. Acts chapter 13, verse 28. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desire they Pilate that he should be slain. Because they didn't, you know, the spirit wasn't dealing with them. And this is why even right now, our beloved elder apostles and the bishops on down of Great Millstone, they always preach about the elect. It's important to keep that in mind because many different Israelite camps that are wayward, they come with a Christianity energy trying to save all of Israel. But they also mainly do it for vain glory. But the point is, the Lord didn't send you to do that. So if you do anything that, that's against the Lord's plans, then he's going to destroy you. That's the Lord giving you free reign and enough rope to hang yourself with. Okay, reading on. Verse 29. And when they had Slaki, and when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulchre. But the most high power Yahweh raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, the Most High Power Yahweh, hath fulfilled the same unto us their children, in that he hath raised up Yahweh Shah again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning he that raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. And this is the point right here. All right. This is talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai, our mediator, high priest and way back to the heavenly father. OK, so let me go ahead and get a few precepts showing that I uh, only so like it, the only begotten son of the heavenly father. Yahweh, our Lord Yahweh Shai is not just um, he's not just a king because he comes from King David's lineage, but he's also our true high priest. Now, let me see if I can get this real quick. Um the first time, and this is also the first time that the word priest 
itself pops up in the scriptures. The book of Genesis chapter 14. I'll start at verse. I'll start from the top of verse one. Genesis chapter 14, verse 1, and it reads, And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Eliezer, Kedileomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, that these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, selected with Bersha, the king of Gomorrah, Shind, selected Shinab, king of Adma, and Shemiber, king of Zeboim and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. All of these were joined together in the vale of Siddim, which is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Kedileomer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the fourteenth year came Kedileomer and the kings that were with him and smote the Rephaims and Ashtaroth, Karnim, Slaki, Karnaim, and the Zumzims and Ham, and the Emims and Shevei, Kirathaim. And the Hor Slaki and the Horites <clears throat> in their Mount Seir unto El, El Paran, which is by the wilderness, and they turned and came to En Mish Slaki En Mishpat, which is Kadesh, and smote all the countries of the Amalekites and all the Amorites that dwelt in Hazan Tamar. Slaki Hazan Tamar, verse eight, and when they went out the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah Slaki and there went out of Slaki and there went out the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah and the king of Adma and the king of Zeboam and the king of Bela the same is Zoar and they joined battle with them in the vale of Siddim with Kedileomer the king of Elam and with Tidal king of nations and with Amraphel king of Shinar and Ariok king of Elisar, four kings with five, and the vale of Siddim was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there, and they that remained fled to the mountain, and they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way, and they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol and brother of Anir. And these were confederate with Abram. Verse 14, and when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, this is another uh, precept right here to let you know that, look, when you hear certain relative names in the scriptures, it doesn't always literally mean that's somebody's immediate brother. Okay. So when it says Abraham's brother, the, the verse above lets you know that Lot was technically and in actuality Abraham's nephew. But brother goes into saying that they were of the same uh, nation of people. They were from the same, you know, family in that in that sense. OK, just like when um, just like when Laban and his mother called Rebecca the, their sister, but she was only technically Laban's actual sister. You know, th these words get tossed around. Brothers is another way of saying my male relative or, you know. Somebody I'm close with and sister is the same. It's the female equivalent. All right, quick sidebar, but moving on. Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his servants. It's like he armed his trained servants born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And when he divided himself, it's like and when he divided himself against them, he and his servants by night and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. Now, here's the point. The reason why I got that is because it's going to get into um, it was some background for the book of Hebrews. OK, Genesis chapter 14, verse 17. And it reads and this something that says the most High's promise to Abram and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Kedileomer and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shevei, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was priest of the most high power. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram 
of the most high power, possessor of heaven and earth. And he, Salaki, and blessed be he, Salaki, and blessed be the most high power, Yahweh, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Okay. Now let me jump to Hebrews chapter 7. Okay. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1. And the subhead says Melchizedek's priesthood like Hamashiach's. And we know Hamashiach is the title of our Lord Yahweh Shah, meaning the anointed. Hamashiach is also where you get the, uh, the word Messiah from. So Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high power, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham, it's like it, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First being so first being by interpretation king of righteousness and that's what melchizedek means in hebrew it's malak tazadak malak meaning king and tazadak meaning righteousness and after that also king of salem which is king of peace all right because salem in the hebrew is shalom which means peace verse three without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but was made like unto the son of the most high power abideth a priest continually now keep that in mind verse 4 now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch abraham gave the tenth of the spoils and the reason why i got this was because when i first heard the breakdown of melchizedek it was on elder yashawamba's channel run to save 144 and when the elder got into this he did a few lessons also about Abraham saying that when you, you know, the Christian church doesn't get into it like that. But once Yahweh Bashmi El Shai starts to sup with you, all right, through the teachings that we learned through our elder apostles and elder bishops, you learn that Abraham wasn't just some ordinary man. Okay. Because back then, if kings was going to war, that's a big thing. That's like nations going to war nowadays. Just imagine that. So Abraham, you know, imagine one, one man having enough resources and enough men of his own to go to war and then, you know smite these opposing forces and take back his people you know because lot was uh lot was caught up in the mix of that and abraham through the spirit and power of how about meow shot him and his servants they had basically uh beat those they, they had basically slaughtered those kings all right and they was able to take lot back now abraham did all that and that's why the scripture says now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch abraham gave the tenth of the spoils okay verse five and verily they that are the sons of Levi who receive the office of priesthood have a com so like have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law that is of their brethren, though they came so like though they come out of Abraham's loins. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham, and he blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Right. Because Abraham was the less, Melchizedek was the better, and Melchizedek blessed Abraham. So the Levitical priesthood, it was a shadow of the Melchizedek priesthood. And right here, this precept says that Melchizedek was like unto the son of the Most High, who abideth the priest forever. Let's get this um, precept right here. <clears throat> And Salaki, if it takes me a minute, because sometimes, depending on how the blue letter has it, it pops up differently. Oh, Salaki, I spaced the wrong thing out. Son of Jonas. Uh, I'll just type it. I'm trying to remember the exact chapter. Some say John. Come, do I help us me out, shot? So, this is the book of Matthew, chapter sixteen, starting at verse thirteen, and it reads: When Yahweh Shai came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, and this is rare. So this is the Lord speaking: Whom do men say that I am? So like it, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? 
And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Hamashayach. So like you, thou art Hamashayach, meaning the anointed, the son of the living power. Now let's see what, what the Lord said in response. Verse 17. And Yahweh answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Right, so what is this also reminiscent of right here? This is this is reminiscent of Melchizedek blessing Abraham. And then generations later, the Heavenly Father Yahweh, he chose the um he chose the tribe of Levi unto himself to be the priestly tribe, at least under that first covenant standard. Now we understand that um the apostle Peter and the previous reincar reincarnation in spirit, he's King David, who was also Jacob. All right. Now, our forefather Abraham. Let me see if I can get it. Uh, where is it at? I think it's Matthew chapter four. Uh, no, it has to be the third. Come on. Why do you This is the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 13. And it reads, The baptism of Yahweh Shah. Then cometh Yahweh Shah from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me? And Yahweh Shai answer, like, and Yahweh Shai answering said unto him, and this is rare letter once again, suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Yahweh Shai, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened up unto him, and he saw the spirit of the most high power descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this is beautiful right here because Elder Yahshua, but he also broke this down a few different occasions saying that in the reincarnation, if you can receive it, uh, John the Baptist was also Abraham because they both had a similar lot. It's lucky. Everybody want to drive fucking loud today. But... Um, Essentially, yeah, Abraham in the reincarnation was also John the Baptist because they both had a similar lot of restoring all things. OK, because Abraham, he was the man that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, chose to restore the righteous way unto because Abraham's fa uh, father, Terah, was an idol worshiper. But the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he, he separated Abraham from his father's house and he gave him the promises that we ended up receiving and the promises got passed down to his son, Isaac. Then the promises got passed down from Isaac's son, Jacob, and then Jacob had 12 sons, which ended up making the 12, tri uh, like the 12 tribes of Israel. And likewise, Elijah, okay, they said Elijah was, was for to come. That was John the Baptist, and our Lord Yahweh Shai confirmed that that was the same spirit, okay? So this right here, like Elder Yahshua had broke down before, was this was... um. One, the, one something that just happened right here was the, the priesthood being transferred back to uh, Melchizedek. So being transferred from the Levitical priesthood under the order of Aaron back to the um, order of Melchizedek, which is Yahweh Shai, if you can receive it. Now, now, now that I got that far, Salakia, but the point I wanted to make was in both accounts, Yahweh Shai had blessed these great men and given them authority over the congregation. Okay. Well, so lock it. And um, with the account with the Apostle Peter, so I can make myself specific, in the account with uh, Melchizedek and Abraham, Melchizedek blessed Abraham, and then the priesthood was received um, generations later in, in the form of the tribe of Levi. And with uh, the Apostle Peter, 
who he made he made him the head of the church and he gave him spiritual power to be able to um let me go back to it Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 right and it reads and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter which means rock and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and I will give unto thee the key, so like the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Right, so this right here was our Lord Yahweh Shai, Melchizedek, the high pre the, the, the priest of the most high, okay, given <clears throat> a man within the nation of Israel spiritual power and authority. <clears throat> Salakia. And this authority that he gave the apostle Peter was being the head of the church. All right. And the church is the Greek word ecclesia, which means the, the assembly of the Israelites. So wherever the Israelites are, this is the Lord letting you know that, look, just like our apostles and our elders teach in the kingdom, you have Yahweh Shai at the head. And then directly underneath Yahweh Shai is the 12 apostles. Which King David, the apostle Peter, is the head of those apostles. So everything's being done in, in the order that, you know, the Lord said is going to be done in. But let me go back and get this word for priest. I'll go right here to Genesis where it mentions Melchizedek. <coughs> Salakia. So the word for priest is Strong's H 3548. Where we have the word Ka. Salakia. We have the letter Ka, the Ha. And we have the Na, so Kahan, outline of biblical usage, priest, principal officer or chief ruler, priest king, Melchizedek and the Messiah. We know that both of those individuals are Yahweh Shai. That's the same spirit. OK. Pagan priests, priests of Yahweh, Levitical priests, Zadokite priests, Aaronic priests, the high priest. OK. So let's see what else we got right here. Uh, da, 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 high priest, the anointed priest. Uh, come on, here we go. So right where it starts and says First Chronicles eighteen seventeen. Okay, it says, and the sons of David were the chief about the king i.e the principal ministers of the kingdom okay so let me read let me see what else they have right here uh it says nevertheless from second samuel 8 and 17 compared with first samuel 21 and 2 as well as 22 and 9 it appears pretty clear that in second samuel chapter 8 Verse 18, priests are really to be understood, although not of the tribe of Levi. This shows that they could not have been priests, and the author of the Chronicles seems to have chosen this interpretation of the more ancient text, being unable to admit of any priests except those of the tribe of Levi. No such priest could have been under this, that dispensation. Okay, but the point is... um. The point that I wanted to make right here with this was, all right, priests have a, a duty to be essentially be judges over the people. They not only have duties in the temple to serve the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, but to also be righteous judges over his people. Now, King David making his uh, son's chief, uh, Salaki, let me get back to the exact word that was used, making them uh, principal ministers in the kingdom. OK, a minister, priests also minister. And that could have easily been a foreshadowing of what's going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. But the point of this epistle is getting more into that word for priest. Going back to the law real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 19. It's like yeah, Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. I'll start at verse 4 and it reads, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. 
These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Masha came and all so like it, and Masha came and called for all the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord Yahweh commanded him. Right. So let's see what word I need to get right here. Uh, it was a specific word. Let me see if I can get it in the Edamon. All right, so I got the word priest in the Edamon online. And I found I found an interesting definition for it. It says, Middle English priest, cleric ranking below a bishop and above a deacon, a, par <sighs> a parish priest from Old English priest. And, you know, take the whole ranking part with a grain of salt, which probably was shortened from the older Germanic form represented by Old Saxon and Old English high german prestar old frisian prestere all from vulgar latin prestir priest from late latin presbyter which we get presbytery from uh presbyter elder from greek presbyteros elder of two old venerable Comparative of Presbyter Old C. Presbys. And this was the part that I found interesting. And Middle English also used generally for any man holding high church office or anyone duly authorized to be a minister of sacred things. Okay? It is a translation of Hebrew Kahan. And I just got that in the um in the book of Genesis. Okay. And it has the whole, you know, not the whole tree, but it has a little bit of an etymology tree right here for it. Showing, you know, how it came from the Greek presbys, uh, presbyteros, presbyter, prester, and preros, or priest, so forth and so on. All right, now let me go back to, it was the book of Ezekiel, chapter 44. Starting at verse, okay. I'm going to start at verse uh, 15. Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 15. I'm going to jump around a little bit through the spirit. And it reads, But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me. And if I remember correctly, Zadok was one of the sons of, of Aaron. So Zadok was in the um Zadok was one of the high priests specifically, because the high priests had to be specifically from uh the loins of Aaron. And Aaron was a Levite. And the other priests, they you know, they were of the tribe of Levi, they had different duties because Levi had three sons. So depending on which one of those three sons you came from, that would determine your duty in the temple. So like you. And Levi's three sons were um, Kohath, which uh, Aaron and Moses comes from Kohath. And um, who else? Gershon with the N and Merari. And they had different duties in the priest's office. But reading on, you know, going back to Exodus, all 12 tribes were always meant to be priests. That's why the Melchizedek, it's one of the reasons the Melchizedek priesthood is superior because this was already pre, it was already foreordained. The Levitical priesthood, as the book of Hebrews gets into, is a shadow of things to come. And I'm going to jump back to that once I finish a few verses right here. So Ezekiel 44, verse 15. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of the dock, that kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord Yahweh. And they shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. And it shall come to pass that when they shall enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments, and no wool shall come upon them whilst they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. And they shall have linen bonnets upon their head, so like upon their heads, and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. They shall not gird themselves with anything causing sweat. And that goes back to the law. All right. Uh, verse 19. And when they go forth into the utter court, even unto the so like even into the utter court of the people, they shall put off their garments wherewith they ministered 
going right there, letting you know that priests do minister, okay? And lay them in the holy chambers, and they shall put on other garments, and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. Verse 20, neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. And that goes right there back into the law. It cuts all that bullshit Jake be on about trying to have long hair, making excuses. And, you know, lineups and fades and all that other type of stuff. He's only supposed to pull your hair, which means shave it down. All right. To an even length. Now, uh, let me see. Verse 21. Neither shall any priest drink wine when they come into the inner court. Neither shall they take for their wives a widow nor her that is put away. But they shall take maidens of the seed of the house of Israel or a widow that had a priest before. Showing you that the, the priest, they had strict ordinances. And in this captivity, we can't keep these ordinances, obviously. And this is where Yahweh Shai's grace comes in because he's our true high priest. He's the mediator and high priest and way back to the Heavenly Father. Okay. Verse 23, and they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the clean and the unclean. And in controversy, they shall stand in judgment and they shall judge it according to my judgments. And they shall keep my laws and my statutes and all mine assemblies and they shall hollow my Shabbats. OK. So right here, that was the point I wanted to get starting at verse 23 to 24. All right. The, this is the, another duty that priests also had. And now that we're under the grace period. OK, we're under the um the beginning stages of the Melchizedek priesthood. Brothers from all 12 tribes are able to be priests, not just the tribe of Levi. OK, so those of us that have been called into this knowledge of this truth, those of us men of Israel that have been called into this knowledge and this truth. To, uh, serve you how about me outside this is also part of our service you know the ministry okay in ministry ministering is just another way of saying serving all right so we're doing the service of the heavenly father how about me outside by making sure that his people are able to discern between the holy and the profane and clean and unclean now jumping back to hebrews chapter 7 And I'm going to give verse five and it reads, and verily they that are of the sons of Levi who received the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law that is of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Right. So basically this is saying that, look, you would think, all right, Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. Let's say we were all raised in Jerusalem and we, you know, we weren't discontinued from our heritage. We, we read the stories. Abraham received tithes from Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High Power, and the king of Salem. And he blessed him. Abraham paid tithes to him, and tithes means the tenth part. Okay? So the tenth part of whatever um, riches he had, he paid it to Melchizedek, whether it was cattle, gold, silver, whatever. Alright? But the point is, Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. And then... Later on down the line, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmi El Shai, he chose the tribe of Levi to be consecrated unto him instead of the firstborn of all Israelites. So the tribe of Levi became the priests under the first covenant standard. And us, uh, of their brethren, we weren't paying tithes to Melchizedek, we were paying tithes to the Levites, which had a high priest after the order of Aaron. So you would wonder, like, okay, well, you know, Levi, he, he, he's a tribe, he's one of the tribes just like us. You know, wouldn't we be paying tithes to Melchizedek? It goes into what the Lord wants, man. The Lord, he for a period of time, he had it where the Levites, that was the priesthood. And then ultimately the priesthood went back to Melchizedek, who was also Yahweh Shai, who came through the loins of Abraham generations later. Now reading on, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 6. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Letting you know that, look, Melchizedek, Yahweh Shai, he's above it. His priesthood is superior to the Levitical priesthood. Okay. Yahweh Shai is even greater than the patriarch Abraham, which is why Jake bugged out when, when Lord Yahweh Shai said that um, 
They was like, you're not even 50 years old and you said you've seen Abraham. And he said, before Abraham was, I am. They didn't get it. But the water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, we've been given the eyes to see, starting with our elder apostles on down. Okay? Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8. And here, meaning first covenant standard, meaning Levitical priesthood. And here, men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. Right, Melchizedek, which is Yahweh Shai. As Melchizedek, our Lord, he, he didn't come needing a father or a mother. He didn't have a beginning of life nor end of days. As it says right here in, in um, the beginning of the verses, this lets you know that, yes, he, as Melchizedek, that was that immortal body that we hope to receive. All right, once we get beamed up into the second covenant, I don't want to write the be of that number. And that lets you know, well, I think I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm gonna, um, I'll get that precept in a minute. That's uh, a lucky. I'll get it right now. Once again, going into Melchizedek. Psalm chapter 110, verse 4. The Lord Yahweh hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, this was King David speaking in the spirit about Yahweh Shai. Now, why is he saying that uh, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek? Because in the Melchizedek priesthood, priests don't give up their offices because in the Levitical priesthood, you're a priest until um, you have to give up the priesthood once you pass on to the spirit world. You can you can pass away of old age. You can be put to death. All these different things as a, a priest under the order of Melchizedek, you're immortal. So you don't lose your priesthood. So the elect men, starting with the, um, you know, the 144,000, 12,000 mighty men out of each of the 12 tribes of Israel, we will be, I don't want to desire, we'll be at that number. We will be priests under the um, under Yahweh Shai, Melchizedek, who's the high priest. He's the high priest and we'll be priests underneath him. The 144,000 is that ruling body. And that lets you know that the 144,000 are men. Now, women are of the elect, but they're of the one third. The one third, the rest of the one third consists of men, women and children. All right. That um that believed on Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Men that weren't necessarily, you know. And a lot of being priests, prophets, and so forth and so on, but they believed and they were helps of the prophets, or you know, so forth and so on. But reading on, the point of this is that if you were a priest under the order of Melchizedek, which that comes with the second covenant, you will be immortal. And also you would be unable to sin against the Heavenly Father Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. That's why you would be immortal. Because under the Levitical priesthood, men that sin just like we do and have to perish just like we do because the ways it's like because the wages of sin is death, those men were receiving tithes. And it's not unrighteous to pay tithes. But the point of what's being made in this precept is showing you the superiority between the Melchizedek priesthood and the Levitical priesthood. So Hebrews chapter seven, verse nine. Well, I'll read back at verse 8. And here, Levitical priesthood, men that die receive tithes, but there, Melchizedek priesthood, he receiveth them of whom it is written, it's like of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. Meaning that the, the priesthood of the order of Melchizedek, all right, Yahweh Shai, okay, you pay tithes to uh, Melchizedek, you're paying tithes to a priest that's unable of, he has an endless life, he's unable of, of perishing, okay, and he's perfect with the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Verse nine, and as I may say, sorry, and as I may so say, Levi also who received tithes paid tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in his father, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Right. So once again, this is letting you know that look, Levi paid tithes by proxy of being in Abraham's loins when Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. So on all levels, the book of Hebrews, the seventh chapter, is letting you know that the Melchizedek priesthood is more superior to the priesthood after the order of Aaron, where your high priest had to be from the tribe of Levi, specifically from the family of Aaron. And all of these men, they had to atone just like you had to atone. They committed sins just like you committed sins, you know, and they were in sinful flesh just like you were in sinful flesh. They, they were capable of perishing, uh, all these different things that is not possible for Melchizedek, Yahweh Shai. Because 
if you're in that order, once again, you are perfect with the Heavenly Father. And this is what we strive to be. We rehearse these righteous acts in the hopes that Yahweh Bashem Yahushua will have Yahweh Shai beam us up into a chariot. And we can be changed and be just like Yahweh Shai Melchizedek. And we can be those perfect priests the Heavenly Father ordained for us to be. Because even when I read uh, Ezekiel, the 44th chapter, you know, the Lord said it one more time. He said it once again, the requirement of being his priests. Let me go back to it. I want to make sure I didn't. Yep. Ezekiel 44, verse 23. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the clean, it's like between the unclean and the clean. And in controversy, they shall stand in judgment and they shall judge it according to my judgments. And they shall keep my laws and my statutes in all mine assemblies and they shall hollow my Shabbats. So that means that, yes, the Melchizedek priests are the only ones that can perfectly do that because Levitical priests, they can still go off. All of us in this sinful flesh right now, we can still go off. But Yahweh Bashem El Shai, he has the, sin, the sins that we commit out of ignorance, he has those covered. But one thing that the Lord makes sure that we, um, even in the sinful flesh, that we get correctly where we're teaching his people is the doctrine. And where one of us may go off, there's a brother or an elder or, you know, an older brother over that brother to make sure, hey, bro, you got to check that. You got to get rid of that. Correct that. Boom. All right. But there's a difference between that and willingly teaching a false doctrine or continuously teaching the false doctrine. No matter how many times you've been rebuked, there's a difference between that and that. But the, pur the purpose is the Melchizedek priests, they'll be perfect in all ways. But ultimately, in the second covenant, we won't even need to teach our people. Everybody will know the laws. But we will be judging the heathen. So. Priests have priests have a high office. They do more than just, you know, the the temple duties for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. They also are judges. Like when you read the book of Judges, when you read in, in the law and the prophets. So like when you get into the law and how the Lord says, bring this matter to the judge that's in your city. Bring this matter to the judge that's in your city. Bring that matter to the judge that's in your city. Now, back then, yeah, the judges were, you know, actual judges and officers over the people. OK, <clears throat> but still in those matters, if you read certain laws, a priest had to be present, so the priest also had to judge the matter. <clears throat> one quick um one quick matter I could think about right now is the adultery test. Numbers chapter five, I believe. Numbers chapter five. Come. Uh, this is the book of Numbers chapter five, verse eleven. And it reads, and the Lord Yahweh spake unto Masha, saying, <coughs> Salakia, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, if any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him and a man lie with her carnally and, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, meaning he doesn't know about it and be kept close and she be defiled and there be no witness against her, neither she be taken with the matter and the spirit of jealousy come upon him and he be jealous of his wife. And she be defiled, or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled, then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her, slaki, and he shall bring her offering for her the tenth part of an ephah of barley meal. He shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon, for it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial bringing iniquity to remembrance and the priest shall bring her near and set her before the Lord Yahweh. and the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle the priest shall take it and put it into the water and the priest shall set the woman before the Lord Yahweh and uncover the woman's head and put the offering of the so I can put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causeth the curse. And the priest shall charge her by an oath and say unto the woman, if no man hath lain with thee and thou hast not gone aside to uncleanliness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from this bitter water that causeth the curse. But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, 
and if thou be so I can, and if thou be defiled and some man have lain with thee beside thine husband then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing and the priest shall say unto the woman the lord yahweh make thee a curse and an oath among thy people when the lord yahweh doth make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell and this water that causeth the curse shall go into the bowels so it shall go into thy bowels and to cause thy socket to make thy belly to swell and thy thighs to rot and the woman shall say aman aman and the priest shall write these curses in a book and he shall blot them out with the bitter water and he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causeth the curse and the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand and shall wave the offering before the Lord Yahweh and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take a handful of the offering, even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar. And afterward shall cause the woman to drink the water. And when he hath made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled and have done trespass against her husband, that the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter and her belly so like and her belly shall swell and her thigh shall rot and the woman shall be a curse among her people and if the woman be not defiled but be clean then shall she be free and shall conceive seed this is the law of jealousies when a wife goeth aside to another instead of her husband and is defiled or when the spirit of jealousy cometh upon him and he be jealous over his wife and shall set the woman before the lord yahweh and the priest shall execute upon her all this law then shall the man be guiltless from iniquity and this woman shall bear her iniquity right so this was a priestly duty and what is this this is judgment this is the priest being a judge because imagine if the priest didn't keep all of this law. Imagine if he would have took a bribe from the woman or something like that. That's perverting judgment. That's not being, that's not fulfilling the duties of a priest. And that's not doing what the Lord commanded that the priest should do in Ezekiel, the 44th chapter, which also goes back into the law. Let me get one precept that's coming to mind right now. Exodus chapter 23, verse... I'll give verses one and two and then jump down. I believe it's verse seven and eight. And it reads, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the what so like it put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Okay, so that gets into not lying and you know, having favoritism and twisting judgment. Now let me see if I can get the next one. It was Okay, I'll start at verse 6. Exodus 23, verse 6, and it reads, Thou shalt not rest the judgment of the poor in his cause. Keep, so for example, like let's say, you know, in the example of the adultery test, let's say the man went to go and do, you know, the due process, and the woman come to find out her thigh rotted, which means that she committed adultery against her husband because she has the seed of another man in her. All right? Let's say if she offered the, the priest some money or something like that, and he would have took it. That's a violation of this law. That's not what a priest is supposed to do. A priest is supposed to keep the judgments and the statutes and commandments of Yahweh Bashmi al Shah. Okay. So let me see. Uh, Exodus chapter 23, verse 7. Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous blood slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blindeth the wise and perverteth the words of the righteous. Right. So that gets into how, as priests, we're not supposed to do that. And yeah, let's say a priest doesn't do it. While being in sinful flesh, you're still capable of doing it. That's why we need Yahweh to heal us. Now, going to the book of St. John, chapter 13. Uh, let me see. Okay. St. 
St. John chapter 13, verse, verse 5. And it reads, Yahweh shall wash the disciples' feet. And after that, he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to, Pe sorry, to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Yahweh shall answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Meaning you'll understand it once I'm, once I'm finished. Verse 8, Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Yahweh shall answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also mine hands and my head. And Yahweh shall say it unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to slack ye. He that is washed needeth needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him, therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is it's like it, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Right. So Lord Yahweh Shah, our high priest, our king, king of kings, Lord of lords and mediator and way back to the heavenly father. When he came here on the earth, he washed the disciples feet because if we call ourselves following the Lord. If he does something and he commands us to do it and it's lawful, we're supposed to do it. You know, Peter didn't understand why he was doing it because he's thinking, you know, you know, currently thinking at first glance, you would assume, OK, he's superior to me. Why is he washing my feet? That's something for servants to do. But, the, you know, the Lord was giving us that example that we're supposed to minister unto each other. Mm, so like you, you know, right now, even in this flesh, the Lord Yahweh is prepping us to be priests on the earth. To be able to minister unto each other. However, we can do it in this flesh. So, yeah, the, the duties of the temple, you know, it goes deeper than just, you know, the carnal ordinances that, that was under the Levitical priesthood that, you know, the Pharisees and the, the wicked Pharisees, Salaki, and the wicked scribes was tripping up over it. Like, it's deeper than that. And our Lord Yahweh Shah himself said he's building a spiritual temple. And our bodies are the temple of the Heavenly Father. So, the spiritual temple is wherever the true believers are. So, yeah, ministering in the temple, okay, it has to do with us, you know, being brotherly one to another. Making sure that the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashmiel Shah kept to the best of our ability, having faith in Yahweh Shah. Making sure that if a brother's going off, we rebuke him. Making sure that, you know, the brother doesn't have to, you know, fall any deeper into any, any type of fault. And all these other different things. But, yeah, the Lord, he... It's different, it's many different facets to being a priest of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmi Shah. And the beauty of these, these scriptures, it shows us that it's not limited to just being of the tribe of Levi. It's not limited to uh, the physical ordinances of the temple, so forth and so on. These things were a shadow of the true perfect tabernacle that's, you know, that's going to be made manifest on earth as it is in heaven. And let me see if I can go back to Hebrews chapter 7. And I'm going to get verse... 11 and it reads it's a lock here. and it reads if there it's like if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood for it flock it for under it the people received the law what further need was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron for the priesthood being changed, there is also, it's like it, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Right. And that means the covenant that comes with the priesthood, because what 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 did the priest ultimately do for the heavenly? Well, 
What did the Heavenly Father Yahweh ultimately command his priest to do? To be his mediator. To be the go-between between the Heavenly Father Yahweh and his people, the children of Israel. And whatever ordinances the Heavenly Father had spoken to be done in the heavens, he commanded the priest to manifest those on earth by relaying it to the people and making sure that the, 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 the people honor these judgments. All right. That's why if you look at it, the priests have different offices. Like uh, when it says Melchizedek, it says priest king and it says Melchizedek and the Messiah, which is the same person, Yahweh Shai. So, yes, Yahweh Shai, he wasn't just high. He's not just Salakia. He's not just high priest. He's also our king. He's also our judge. And yes, he's our mediator. Because that's also the duty of the high priest is being a mediator between the Heavenly Father and his people. So giving us the understanding of the laws, steps and commandments and how to walk in them, the proper way to move. Yahweh Shai, he, he did that 2000 years ago and he's still doing it to this day via the Rechak Wadash, the Holy Spirit and the men that he set up to, to guide us in the understanding of these scriptures. Okay, so Hebrews chapter 7, verse 13. For he is, it's like, for he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. And verse 14 explains it. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses, Masha, spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment. Meaning you had to be born, you know, physically born of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Levi to be a priest in, into the family of Aaron. But after the power of an endless life, the order of Melchizedek. Verse 17, for he testified thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and the unprofitableness thereof. Right. Basically saying that the Levitical priesthood, it was a shadow of the heavenly priesthood, but ultimately it was unprofitable because it never was capable of cleansing our people of their sins. The Day of Atonement, for example, was just passed. The high priests under the first covenant standard after the order of Aaron, they would have to go into the holies of holies and uh, atone for their sins and the sins of the people every year meaning what and what does that mean that means that people were still sinning and we still had sins that we needed cleanse whether they were small or great but yahweh shy as high priest he did this once he offered himself up as a sacrifice on the cross once and now we have a way back to the heavenly father so this priesthood it isn't limited to it's not based upon the carnal commandment. And yes, us even being the children of Israel, even that's not based on the carnal commandment. It's based on the spirit. Because in the spirit, the Heavenly Father in, in, in the heavens, he had already ordained us to be Israelites. He already created each, each and every one of our souls. And on earth, he manifested us in the bloodline that he named Israel, Yasha Allah. But ultimately, the elect of the nation of Israel they were they were of the priesthood of Melchizedek in the heavens before they ever manifested on earth. And now that's all going to come back full circle once the kingdom of heaven is ushered in. And the Melchizedek priesthood is strong and profitable, whereas the Levitical priesthood was uh, had weakness and it was unprofitable, as it says right here in verse 18, because we have the strength of not falling to sin anymore. Because Yahweh Bash Mel Shah is going to give us perfect extraterrestrial bodies programmed to do righteousness. And if you continuously walk in righteousness, you're immortal. The Lord wasn't just the Lord didn't command his prophets to tell us fluff when he said, if you walk in these laws, that's the commandments, it will go well with thee. Because we still don't know the half of what it means for it to go well with us. Because like Elder Yahshua said, we've been alive, but we've never been living. Now, let me give one last precept about being priests. And uh, I think I might wrap it up through the spirit. So Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. And the subheading says, Exaltation of the afflicted. The spirit of the Lord Yahweh is upon me because the Lord Yahweh 
hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Right, because right now the prison that we have is these chains of darkness, this sinful flesh. Okay, and being stuck in the flesh, we would, we would always have been offending the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bosh, Meow, Shai, sinning against Him, and, you know, having to keep on uh, being born into the earth, walking righteously, committing a sin, and then having to, you know, perish because of the sin, go to the grave, be reincarnated, wash, rinse, and repeat. But through Yahweh, Shai, we have a way back to the Heavenly Father where we can finally be those priests after the order of Melchizedek and be immortal and have dominion over the earth. And when our Lord, uh, when our Lord gave up the ghost on the cross, the uh, veil for the temple was rent. Okay, so all twelve tribes are able of be, are capable of being priests now. They they're capable of performing uh, priestly duties in the spiritual uh, third temple because that was the plan from the beginning. Verse two, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord Yahweh and the day of vengeance of our power. To comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn into Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord Yahweh, Basham Yahushai, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old wastes, they shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. One of my favorite Hebrew words, a car, which means that they're going to be working the land and not owning any of it. And even going back to verse 4, they're not going to just be working our land. They're going to be building up our waste cities too. Verse 6, and here's the point. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord Yahweh. Men shall call you the ministers of our power. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. And this didn't say just the tribe of Levi. This is talking about all 12 tribes. Going back to Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. The Lord says, we'll be unto him a kingdom of priests. And he meant that. After the order of Melchizedek is what makes it possible. Because, yeah, you're right. Okay, you can't be a priest. You got you to be on the order of Levi. You're right, bro. You got it. I'm not claiming Levitical priesthood. I'm claiming Melchizedek priesthood through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Shai. Which also includes Levi, by the way. It's just under that priesthood, okay, it won't be based upon, okay, the high priest won't be coming from the, uh, the, the family of Aaron. It'll be Yahweh Shai. He's the permanent high priest. Because high priest's office only changed once the high priest passes away to the spirit world. And Yahweh Shai, he's immortal. Melchizedek is immortal. So he's permanently the high priest. There's not going to be any switching off of offices once we, <laughs> once we reach the kingdom of heaven. Once you get your, your uh, position in the kingdom of heaven, that's it for eternity. This is why brothers are uh, given diligence to make their call and election sure through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi al Shai. And praying that Yahweh Bashmi al Shai cast us not from his presence and take not his Holy Spirit away from us. Because whatever position you get in the kingdom, if you're a two-third and you, you know, you fell out the truth, whatever the case might be, and you'll be good in the kingdom, but you know, that's your position for eternity. But those of us of the hopeful elect, we pray to Yahweh Bashmi al Shai at the very least, you know, make us a doorkeeper on the ships. You know, as long as we one of the elect and we still strive to be of the very elect. The 144,000, we can sit at the table with Yahweh Shai, drink that fruit of the vine that our Lord spoke about, so forth and so on. These are the things, these are the meditations that we have to motivate us to do more in this truth. Because like our Lord says, Salakia, like King David said, Psalm chapter 84, verse, I'm going to start at verse 9, and it reads, Behold, O Most High Power, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my power than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord Yahweh, power is a, so like is a sun and shield. The Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahushai will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord Yahweh Tazabawath, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee, Amon. And that's why that's what we that's what we desire. That's why we always see brothers talking about the kingdom. This is why you see brothers, 
you know, rejoicing in Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah's putting his spirit on these wicked ass warmongering Edomites to destroy each other. Because the sooner they do that, the sooner we get into the kingdom. And we understand through much tribulation we, we enter into the kingdom of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, but we also have the faith that the Lord will preserve us even in Jacob's trouble. And we pray that he'll uh, preserve us in the hour of temptation. And that's all through faith on his only begotten son. And ultimately, you know, if we're of the elect, he'll reveal us being of the elect and we'll be able to resist that hour of temptation and endure until the end that we might be saved. It's so like that we will be saved. But yeah, like, you know, King David said it right here. He'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Most High, meaning on these ships in the kingdom. Because if you're a doorkeeper, you good. That means you're not a two third nigga. That means you you didn't you ain't you ain't gonna uh, take part in that lake of fire and brimstone for turning against the Lord. You know, and the beautiful part about King David was even when he was in his humble uh, beginnings, when you read the accounts of his life. All right, he didn't even, he didn't expect none of what happened to him. But the Lord not only did he make him king, so like you not only did he take him from uh, the sheep coat to killing Goliath. He made him captain of uh he made him a captain in King Saul's army, which was the army of the Yahabash Shah ultimately, and then put away King Saul from being king because he was wicked, made King David king, and even said that King David would have an everlasting throne and that his son would sit on it, and that son is Yahweh Shah. And even in all that, King David said, Who am I? And that's the spirit that we that we're in, man. We we pray to Yahweh Bash Shah. You know, he shows mercy on us and just forgives us for our sins. And Adawan Ratazah, we be of that elect number that we can sit with Yahweh Shai. We can be around him. You know, we know in part, we prophesy in part. But let me get that precept. Prophesy in part. Why do y'all bust me on shot? It's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9. And it reads, For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Right? So we have, you know, depictions of Yahweh Shah based on the scriptures that he left us and so forth and so on. We got ideas about how the kingdom may look. But when our Lord returns, we'll know. Everything that we that was taken away from us, he'll bring it back to our remembrance. We'll be in perfect bodies. We can experience everything in a way better way than we that we that we can do it right now. And we'll be able to be around the Lord. You know, that's one of the meditations I have that keeps me motivated to want to keep striving to be of the very elect number. But that's all I have in this epistle right here. Another Shabbat day reading through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. Hopefully, it was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father, and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Waharachach, Wadash. Double honors as always to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Our beloved elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing and sincere citations as always to the rest of the hopeful elected nation of Israel, which consists of our sincere elders and Akim of Great Millstone, and the Akim on down that teach the likewise doctrine and truth of sincerity. The speckled bird Hebrews are like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen because this is not a black thing like Elder Malcolm says. All right. And if those members of the, uh, of the hopeful elect, any member of the elect that is of the elect, it's not going to matter if they look like a Moabite or an Ammonite or whatever or Edomite. If they're an Israelite and they're the elect, the Lord is going to make sure that they are going to be in that lot of being priests of the Most High. A sincere salutations as always to the sincere Akim of the nation of Israel that rehearsed the righteous acts of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah and the sincere Akwatim that listened in silence and meekness as the scriptures command to do so. Kwam Yasharala and Ababa Ball. We're almost out of here. Adawan Ratazah and we got next. Adawan Ratazah. Shema Yasha Allah, Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh, Achad, Wa Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha, Shalach Rayam, Wa Ainashim, Wa Haragim. Wa Ashim, Wa Abadim, Wa Mashapatim, all called Adawamim, Wa Gawayim, Wa Ayabim Nawa, Wa Babal, Wa Babal, Wa Babal, Wa Babal, I Tha, I Tha, I Tha, I Tha, Thawada, Thamyad, Tawab, Aman. Shabbat Shalawam.